Alrighty, hello honors chemistry students. Uh, today's video is going to be pretty brief on bonding. Hopefully the activity you just did helped you learn a little bit about different types of bonds. Um, so let's continue here um, just to give you some concrete notes about the two different types of bonds. Just as review from last unit, remember that a chemical bond just is something that holds atoms together in molecules. It's a, an attraction between two things that pulls two atoms together. A bond is what is holding things together. And then remember from unit two, a chemical bond cannot be broken physically. It has to be chemically broken down by something. You can't just break a chemical bond with your hands. When I tear this piece of paper, when I tear this piece of paper in half, I'm not tearing the bonds. I'm just separating molecules. I'm not breaking any bonds in that process. A chemical bond is super strong. You can't just pull it apart. Again, some more review, valence electron is an electron on the outermost shell. Remember that these valence electrons are the sh um, electrons that are participating in the bonding. So depending on how many valence electrons there are, um, helps determine what type of bond may occur. So, types of bonds. The first type of bond we're going to talk about is an ionic bond um, or an ionic compound and these are super strong bonds with really high polarity. I know we haven't learned about polarity yet so um, we're going to revisit that in a couple slides here and then I will have an additional video for you to watch on polarity as well. But ionic um, bonds are very strong bonds. It's um, when, what occurs when a positive ion and a negative ion combine. So it's between a cation and an anion. And the ionic bond is a transfer of electrons. It's the complete transfer of electrons, okay? Things aren't shared between two things. One is ripping something from the other. They're ripping electrons from one another. So an example of an ionic bond is NaCl. So notice that Na is a metal and Cl is a non-metal, which hopefully you picked up in your activity, that an ionic bond is always between a metal and a non-metal. The other type of bond then we're going to talk about is a molecular bond or a covalent bond. We're going to talk about them by calling them covalent bond for the first part of this um, act, um, unit. And then as we get into nomenclature, it'll be called molecular bonds, but they are the same thing. And they share electrons. So nothing is strong enough to completely rip them away from the other thing. Um, they just share their electrons. It's generally a weaker bond because the electrons aren't being completely transferred, but they're sharing and there's generally pretty low polarity. Reminder, H is included. Anytime we have hydrogen, for the most part, it's always going to be a, co a covalent bond. Um, remember that hydrogen is considered a non-metal, and covalent bonds occur between two non-metals. Okay? So ionic compounds are a metal and a non-metal. A molecular compound is two non-metals. And then there is such a thing as a metallic bond as well, which we're not going to talk about too much, but just know that a metallic bond is between two metals. Again, we won't run into that in situation quite um, very often, but it's just a bond between two metals and it's called a metallic bond. Um, they're generally not very strong. Hydrogen bonds also um, occur, but again, we're not gonna talk about those. So polarity. A polar molecule arises when one of the atoms exerts a stronger attractive force on the electrons in the bond. So H2O is our example here, and I am going to um, give you another video on this, so I'm just going to give you a super brief explanation. But basically, polarity occurs when things are bonded and they're sharing electrons. You can get a polar molecule. So polar molecules only arise when we're looking at covalent bonds. So you can have a polar covalent bond or a nonpolar covalent bond. And this is all determined by electronegativity. Remember, our trend for electronegativity is that as you go up and to the right on the periodic table, things get stronger because electronegativity is the um, strength of an, ele or an element to pull more electrons towards it. So, in H2O, oxygen has a stronger electronegativity than hydrogen. So what this means is that oxygen and hydrogen are still sharing electrons, but oxygen is just a little bit stronger. So it's going to hold that electron just a little bit tighter towards itself, a little bit closer to his side. The electron isn't right in the middle of this bond. So picture it like a tug of war. Oxygen and hydrogen are having a tug of war between an electron and that little rope in the middle of the tug of war rope, which signifies what's in the middle, is slightly closer to oxygen than oxygen that it is to hydrogen because oxygen is stronger. Oxygen is never gonna beat hydrogen. They're basically gonna just have a stalemate between this tug of war, but oxygen will always be slightly ahead of hydrogen. That rope in the middle is going to represent the electron again. So since that little rope in the middle is slightly closer to oxygen, oxygen will have a slightly negative charge. 
whereas since the electron is slightly further from hydrogen, it'll give hydrogen a slight positive charge. This polarity is super important because it gives things partial charges. Specifically in water, it allows the water to have really high um, surface tension and be able to stick to itself. Um, so like if you ever did the experiment where you have a penny and you squirt water on the penny, it becomes like a little dome of water. It doesn't just spill all over. If you pour too much milk in a cup, it stays at the top, or water in a cup, it stays at the top. It's because things are polar that they can stick to one another. Okay. Um, I do have a little video here on bonds, but apparently it's not going to play. And then I have another video as well for you to watch that's in this PowerPoint. Um, so I will post that on Canvas for you to watch of just what a, a bond is. And then make sure you also watch that other video on polarity to get a little bit better understanding about that. Thanks.